Everyone, this is uh, the second video of the calculator series, and this gets matched up with oh wow. To learn how to plot data on your calculator, uh, how to make a regression line, a best fit line to go through those points, and then we're going to review the intersect key. So we'll come back and talk about interpolation and extrapolation in a minute. So what I need you to do is pull out your calculator, take a minute, read this problem. You can pause the video and read the problem. And then let's pull out our calculator and enter this data into our calculator. Now, the problem says we're looking at years since 1990. So you're going to make a T column because the T column is what we're going to enter into our calculator. So for T years since 1990, you can pause the video and fill in these T values. I'm going to say uh, 1992 will be a T value of 2. 1996 is a T value of 6. We have 10, 14, 18, and 21. So the problem asks you to use your calculator to make a scattered gram. And basically what a scattered gram or a scattered plot is, is just to plot these points on your calculator. So let's turn on our calculator. And the key to enter in, I'm just gonna clear this out. The key to enter in data is the stat key. My pen is touching it right now. So I need you to go in and hit stat and then enter. Now I have material in my calculator that I don't want. So to clear a list, you highlight, I'm going to use my arrow key up and highlight the list so that it's dark. And then all you do is hit clear and then enter. Enters at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, or of your calculator. Now I want to clear out list L2. So I arrow over and arrow up so the L2 is dark and then just clear enter. Don't hit delete, because it'll delete that column. And if you do, it's not a big deal. I can fix that on, on Monday. So let's go ahead and enter in our data. So the first set of data, our inputs, are gonna go into L2. So just hit this num first number two, and then enter, and you'll see the two come in the L1, and then the cursor drops below to wait for the next set of data. So I'm just gonna go ahead and and enter in this data, and I hit enter after each entry. And that'll scroll the cursor down that list. And then I'm going to use my left arrow to pop up to L2. And I'm going to enter in these percentages of people who wore seatbelts for these various years since 1990. Okay? So to plot this set of data, we're going to use what's called stat plot. It's right above the y equals. It's in blue. So I'm going to hit the second y equals key. And so hitting the blue key tells the calculator you want the blue option above that key. And we're going to turn one on. So I'm going to hit enter twice. Now there's a lot of options of drawings that you can do on your calculator, histograms, box and whisker displays, but we want the first one highlighted. So use your arrows to navigate through the calculator and just hit enter on the very first option. And then our input value or our X list is in L1 and the Y list is in L2. If they don't say L1 and L2, you can find those above the one and the two. Do you see it says L1 and L2? They're in blue, so you have to hit the blue key first. So if I wanna put L1 as my X list, I'm gonna hit my second key, and then I'm gonna hit number one. Do you see L1 right above the number one? And then L2 should pop up, or L1 should pop up, and then you can repeat to make sure L2 is your Y list. And then this is how I like the first option. That's what my points are going to look like. So we've learned stat. We've learned stat plot. And now we want to say to the calculator, can you please make a window that will plot those points? 
And so you can go into Zoom and hit Zoom. Quit out of there. I'm going to hit quit. I'm going to quit out of that mode. Something happened when I hit Zoom. So if you hit an option and something weird happens, just quit out of that mode. Do you see quit is in the blue? So I just hit second quit and it just gets me out of that mode. So anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and hit Zoom. So when I hit Zoom, there it comes up. You want it. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. You just want to hit nine, but option nine is called Zoom Stat. And that will automatically make a window. Oh, I got some stuff I got to clear out of my white tables. That'll make a window where you can plot the points that you entered in into your stat. Now, if you get some weird lines coming through, you have some stuff in Y equals. So I'm going to go to my Y equals, and I'm just going to clear everything out. Arrow down, I hit clear, and now when I go to graph, I should just see that nice set of ordered pairs. So my math lab is going to ask you what these, what the axes are going to be on the vertical and the horizontal. Okay, so if we flip the page, they're going to ask you to label what the what the horizontal would be, in this case, it's time, but it's time in years since 1990. That's on our horizontal. And on our vertical, I believe they called that P equals F of T. So we're going to call it P, which also... You can, I'll just pop F of T up there as well. And this was the percentage of Americans wearing seatbelts. Now, if you go to your calculator, I'm going to just show you an option right now. If you go to your calculator and hit the trace button, do you see it says trace? That will hop you through all of your ordered pairs. So if you want to see the ordered pairs that you plotted, trace is kind of a nice option. If, if you had an outlier and one of the points didn't line up, you can just work through it really quickly to see which one you, you might have plugged in wrong into your calculator. Okay? So, the next question. Determine the linear regression equation. Okay. What the linear regression equation is, is the, what's called the best fit line. And it's considered a model of your data that best fits the points that you're given. It comes closest to all of your data values. So to calculate that, we're going to hit stat. And then we're going to arrow over to calc. And do you see linear regression? Instead of mx plus b, it has ax plus b. So arrow down. And then just make sure that, again, the X list is L1 and the Y list is L2. And if it's not, you know how to hit the second and then the number one or the second and the number two option. Now, I'm going to show you how to store your regression line. You can leave your frequency list blank. Now, I'm going to store mine into Y1. This will save you from plug having to rewrite the data unless they ask you to round it on my math lab. But I'm just going to show you just a nice feature how to store your data when you make your line. So I'm going to say, hey, can you please store to Y1? So to find Y1, you're going to hit your VARS key. That's your variable. So you hit VARS, and you're going to go over to Y VARS, and then hit Enter twice. And that will store it into Y1. And then we'll calculate it. All right. So let's write this down. My math lab asks you to, to round it to three decimals. Remember the input's T.
Okay, and then we're going to be asked some questions on it. So each, each ordered pair that we plotted, I just am going to remind you, is in the order of t comma p, where t is time in years since 1990. And remember, p is the percentage of Americans. wearing seatbelts. Now, they're going to ask you to find things, and when they ask you to interpret them in terms of the problem, you have to tell me what each piece means. So first of all, they said, what's the p-intercept? So the p-intercept means you have a p, but t is zero. So if t is zero, right, then that goes away, and then you have 68, 0.138. That's the value on your y-intercept. It's the starting value. So it says, what does this mean in the situation? Well, if t is zero, zero years have gone by since 1990. So in 1990, about 68.138% wait the word percent out, percent of Americans wore seatbelts. Okay. So what is the slope? The slope is the number in front of your T, va t value. So M is equal to 1.073. Now, to interpret it, I always put it over 1, and that will help me remember that there's a rise and a run. So the rise is the change in the Y value or the output. So that's a percent. And then the output or the run is the output, and that's going to be per year because that's a change in years, so per one year. So it looks like the percentage of Americans wearing seatbelts is rising. So every year, since 1990, the percent of Americans wearing seatbelts is increasing by 1.073% per year. Okay. Next question says, predict the percentage of Americans who wore seatbelts in 2007. Right, so let's talk about interpolation and extrapolation. Interpolation means you stay within the bounds of your given set of data. So interpolation means I stay between 1992 and 2011. Anything beyond those years would be extrapolation. Anything within those years is interpolation. When you interpolate, your data can be somewhat reliable. The strength of your model will give you the strength of the reliability. Extrapolation means you're going outside of your set of given data. And sometimes when you go outside of your given set of data, uh, the data is not as reliable. Okay. All right. So if they want to know the percent of Americans who wore seatbelts in 2007, well, that is within the bounds of my data, right? Do you see that would fall between 2004 and 2008? So that's going to be interpolation. So let's figure out the T value, right? So this T value is going to be 2007 
minus 1990. So how many years has gone by since 1990? So it looks like we're going to have 17 years. So here's my formula. Wherever I see a T, I'm going to put a 17. Now, you can just plug and chug on your calculator, but I'm going to remind you that you have your table option, right? So let's turn on our calculator. Remember table, which we used in another video. Now, you can just delete these if you don't want to use, see what's up there, right? Delete, delete, delete. So now, if you want, this func your function's in y equals. So under the table, you can just hit 17, and there's your result. Now, that's an unrounded answer. If you use the rounded values, let's see how close it is. Right, the rounded, these are rounded values, so it's pretty close. So just be careful on my math lab. When they ask you to use the rounded values, use the rounded values. Otherwise, you're going to be off, oops, that should be nine. You're going to be off by just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, this is unrounded. This is using the rounded values. So it looks like in the year 2007, 86.379 or 86.376% uh, percent of Americans wore seatbelts. Now, when they ask about 100% of Americans wearing seatbelts, well, if you look at our data, it looks like we're going to have to extrapolate that. We are way outside the bounds of our data, right? It only goes up to 91%, and we're going to go outside the bounds of our data and make a prediction about the future. And I'm thinking this is going to be model breakdown because it's chances, chances are likely that not every single American is going to be wearing a seatbelt in a given year. But let's go ahead and calculate it. First of all, it's extrapolation. And we want to know in what year. That's a time value. So we want to know what time will 100% of Americans be wearing their seatbelts. Now you can, of course, subtract the 68 and then divide. But I want to remind you how to use the intersect key on your calculator. This is in Y1, and this is, we're going to put in Y2, because we're going to have to change our windows a little bit. So we already have our function in Y1, and now I'm going to put 100 in Y2 to figure out when the Y value is it's going to be 100 what t value will get us that. Now when you hit graph, there's my line, but you see how I don't see a 100? 100, 100, y equals 100 is just going to be this horizontal line. So go to your window and you see the maximum y value is 94. So in order to see 100, we need to be a little higher than 100. So I made it 150. All right, so there's my line. There's where my 100 is. And you see how my pen would be maybe where these cross, where this keeps rising and this um, continues on horizontally? Maybe crosses right here. So that means you have to make your x value a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to my window. I don't, I'm not sure what the answer is. Let's make the, y, the x value, the biggest x value, would be 50. So there's my percentages, there's 100%, that's where they cross. So if in doubt, go to Calc, Option 5, and 1, 2, 3 enters. So when T is 29.6, 100% of the population, according to this model, wore seatbelts. Now, they always ask us to round to the closest year. So the closest year would, let's write this down. 
Hold on. So T is 29.698699. So when you add that to 1990, it's pretty obvious that the year you're going to have to round. Hold on. I don't think I wrote that wrong. Let me go back. Oh, it was 29. Sorry. You're probably wondering what I'm doing. 29.699. So 29.699 plus 1990. I knew the answer was 2020. So when we round that, we get 2020. So according to the model in the year 2020, everyone wore a seatbelt. This is an example of model breakdown, right? That probably didn't happen, but we extrapolated. So a lot of the data isn't reliable. And they say, what would this value look like in function notation? So f of 29.699, that was my t value equals 100. This is my p-value. T and p. The ordered pair comes right off of that. Okay. Last problem, and then we'll do example two, and then we'll call the day. The t-intercept. All right, remember it goes t comma p. So that means we have a t, but the p is zero. And this is extrapolation, right? Um, to find a percent where no Americans wore seatbelts, this is going to be a, a very early year, according to this model. So again, here we'll do this one by, we'll calculate this one out by hand. But you could use the table key if you wanted. But if you don't want to use the table key, we can calculate this out by hand. So we'll subtract 68.138. And then we'll divide. So I wanted you to be aware you can get a negative t value. That just means it happened before 1990. So I got T to be negative 63.5. So 1990 plus negative 63.5 it looked like this happened. If we round it to the closest year, they would probably want 1927. So in the year 1927, according to this model, nobody wore seatbelts, which actually might be true. I'm not sure what the seatbelt situations were in the, like the, the Model T. That's when those were out. I'm pretty sure those were out by then. Uh, let's write it as an ordered pair. So negative 63.5 comma 0. Time and then percentage. So now you should be able to do two of the problems in my math lab. And the last problem looks something like this. Okay. So unlike the problems we've been doing, there's a few in my math lab that don't give you a time adjustment. But remember, time is always the input. And then in this case, it looks like expenditures or dollars, I'll make it D, is the output. Okay? So read the scenario. You can turn the video off and read the problem and then come back and let's find the two ordered pairs that we need. So the two ordered pairs look like in 1985, the expenditures were 3.2 thousand. And in 2011, the expenditures were 10.7 thousand. Now we could find the slope 
in the traditional way we've been finding it, but the purpose of this section is to practice with your calculator. So let's go ahead and enter in data into our calculator. So you hit that and enter, clear the lists out. These are my inputs, and these are my outputs. To tell the calculator to make a stat plot, we turn a plot on, and then we hit zoom 9. So there's our two points. To have the calculator make a linear regression, we go to STAT, CALC, Option 4. I'm going to have the calculator store it in Y VARS. You don't have to do that. You could just write it down and round it. Cal uh, my math lab asks you to round it to three decimal places. So Y equals the slope plus b. Instead of y, I'm going to say d is dollars. Now this is in, if you hit graph, right, this is now in our calculator. So we want to know how much this is going to cost the public school per person in 2014. So this is our T value. There's no time adjustment. I'm just going to use my table key. So if we go to table, we know the input is 2024. And our, our values in Y1. We don't need to worry about Y2. Our, our, our equation is in Y1. Right? Oh, I want to, to 2024 though. There we go. So did you guys get $14.45? $1,000. You could have also just put 2024 in there and calculated it with your calculator. But in 2024, the per student expenditure was approximately $14.45,000. So you should be able to now go into my math lab and complete this, uh, complete section 5.6, which is on, and you can now complete the example that's on the other side of the page plus the piecewise. All right, so please reach out and let me know if you have any questions.